that a currency union would cause great damage to both the UK and the Scottish economies, costing jobs and money, which could result in UK taxpayers promising to bail out Scottish banks and damage the sterling's value in the international markets. At least that's what Osborne is saying anyway. So let's talk this through. We've got George Galloway right here. He's MP for the Respect Party in Britain. So the question is, to begin with, do you think that Mr George Osborne is using bullying tactics or has Mr Salman's pick and choose options run out? Which side do you sit on? Well, I think that the sound and sight of George Osborne lecturing the Scottish people is a difficult one for many to swallow. But at the same time, his message is unequivocal and cannot be avoided. It is not possible to be an independent state whilst using someone else's currency uh, because the people who issue the currency as opposed to use the currency are the people who will set the conditions, the levels of public expenditure, the rate of taxation and so on. All fiscal and monetary powers must obviously remain with the country that is issuing the currency. And uh, Mr. Salmond, I think, has made a huge blunder in claiming that you can have independence whilst using the UK pound. He ought to have had the courage of his convictions and said either that Scotland would have its own currency or would join the Eurozone. I know why he did neither of those. First of all, because the euro doesn't have a particularly good name here and hasn't been going terribly well. And secondly, because the example of, say, Iceland or Slovakia, perhaps even better, where the Slovakian currency lasted for 37 days before the World Bank and the IMF moved in and effectively colonized the country, uh, was not palatable as an alternative. But uh, you can't really have an independent Scotland with an English queen, a UK pound, uh, still in NATO and subject to American-led uh, military political decisions, and of course also still be in the EU and subject to all the strictures that come with that. If there is a yes vote in September, what is the worst case scenario for the Scottish economy? Or the worst case is a race to the bottom. That's the worst case for the working people, at least. A race to the bottom provoked by a low tax, low public expenditure, Thatcherite Reaganomics regime in London, forcing a Scottish state to chase them all the way to the bottom, to cut their taxes even lower, to make their public expenditure even less, to make even more people unemployed. And uh, Scotland would then be uh, independent in the sense that it could fly its own flag from Edinburgh Castle. Uh, but the standard of living of people on both sides of the border, with virtually perpetual right-wing conservative rule in England, shorn as it would be of 59 anti-conservative MPs taken out of Westminster, that would be a disaster for working people on both sides of the border. And it's the interest of working people that I represent. OK, George Galloway, we'll leave it there. Thank you for talking to us today. Very clear on where you set, uh, where you sit on the agenda there. Thank you very much indeed. And another political and economic relationship that is on tender hooks right now. This time it's between Switzerland and the European Union. Now, this is following the Swiss Parliament's decision to 